Good morning, everyone, and we welcome you to this service of worship here at First Presbyterian Church in Niagara Falls, and we also welcome our YouTube viewers. And we welcome Mark DeFazio here this morning, and I see Mark already put you to work, so welcome. We're glad you're here. As you, um, he's here because his dad celebrated his 101st birthday yesterday. And Dom is going to be staying, hopefully, at Our Lady of Peace um, permanently now um, when the details are all worked out. So anyway, he is recuperating, Dom is recuperating, and um, <clears throat> you could certainly send him a card at Our Lady of Peace. The drum circle will meet on Wednesday night at 5.30. Come join the fun and the fellowship. Um, we're, we meet here at 5.30 at the church for about an hour, and instruments are provided. The, all the um, beautiful white flowers over here are from the Isabel Fagiani wedding yesterday here at the church. So thanks to the Fagiani family for leaving them. A reminder to keep our uh, restoration grant project in your prayers for the next several months. We won't know anything until December, so I know it's a long time, but keep, keep your prayers coming. We thank Mark and the choir this morning for their beautiful contributions to our service. Let us pray. Lord, hear us this morning as we pray and give you our thanks for your love and care of this church family. We ask this morning that you place your healing hands on Mark, Bill, Abe, Christine, Dom, and um, grant all of them your peace and comfort. And also grant our shut-ins, all those who are unable to be here today, your peace and comfort. We ask also this morning that you bless and protect all the people who are fighting for their lives, some in the forest fires out west, those who survived the Kentucky floods, and those fighting in Ukraine. We pray for peace in our country and an end to the bitter divisiveness. We also pray for all those who are seeking, struggling, In your name we pray, amen. Since this is the first Sunday in August, we wish anyone with an August birthday or and or anniversary, happy, happy day. opening sentences this morning. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is a gift to be received, treasured, and shared with joy and with thanksgiving. May the peace of Christ be with each and every one of you. Let us worship the Lord. Join me for the call to worship. Come, listen to the one who speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Come, see the one who shines forth in the perfection of beauty. Come, bring thanksgiving, the sacrifice that honors the one who shows the salvation of God.
join me in prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may see in you the fulfillment of all our need and may turn from every false satisfaction to feed on the truth and living bread which you have given us in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our prayer of illumination. God of mercy, you promise never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. The first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 1, and then 10 to 20. The vision of Isaiah, son of Asmoth, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hekaziah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs, or of goats, when you come to appear before me, who asked this from your hand, trample my corpse no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of con convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to, the e to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. They are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken the word of the Lord.
And now from the Gospel of Luke. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes, Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few years ago, or maybe several years ago, John and I did an experiment in how we were eating. Well, we ate pretty much the same way, but we made a year-long effort to eat foods that we could procure within a hundred miles of where we lived, so that it would have to be grown or raised somewhere within 100 miles. We did it for a couple of reasons, mainly because we were thinking about the impact of our food choices on the environment. Now, it's pretty common to have signs everywhere telling people to eat locally. When you go to Wegmans or Tops, they always have a section where they have the local foods or they have up a sign where the local produce came from. But 15 years ago, it wasn't so common. 15 years ago, there weren't nearly as many farmers markets as there are now. So we were all in on this. And so John would spend a lot of his time while he was at home um, making phone calls and trying to find places where we could get things we thought we wanted. One of the things that we wanted was to see if we could find fresh chickens that had been raised locally, but we didn't want them to have been factory farmed. So there are a couple of places that actually deliver chickens to your home from around here, but they are, you know, kind of factory farm. They are kept pretty close together. They don't have a lot of opportunity to run out and enjoy their short little lives. Um, But finally he found one, and I was appalled when he told me it was going to cost, you know, $13.95. I was like, a $13 chicken? How good can that be? But what we discovered is it was delicious. It tasted so much better than the kind we had grown accustomed to from the grocery store. It had a lot more dark meat, which is what we both prefer. We just really enjoyed it, and so we were converted to eating local food as much as possible. During this experimental year, we did have a few exceptions, though. We made some little rules for ourselves that we should really try to have at least 75% of our food come from close by. So, you know, when you think about bread and where did our wheat come from and that sort of thing, so that was kind of a challenge. But then that extra 25% coffee fell into that category. John could not live without coffee, and we knew we couldn't find locally grown coffee, so coffee was an exception. I thought that chocolate was pretty important. John tended to agree, so chocolate was an exception. And then one of our other rules was that if friends invited us over, we could eat whatever they served us. They didn't have to adhere to our rules when they were giving us you know, dinner at their house. But part of what undergirded this experiment was learning some about the American food system. Now, in some ways, it's pretty efficient, but everything farming has become kind of like factory work. 
We treat the soil as if it's not a living organism and filled with living organisms. We treat the plants as if we just want to get the most of whatever we can get from any particular space. We treat the animals that we get our meat from as if they're not really beings, but just a source of meat for us. And we harm our environment. And then we make things, you know, we grow things so that they can withstand the travel of 1,500 miles to get to our tables. Now, we live in New York, and there's plenty of produce grown here in New York, so maybe ours doesn't have to go quite so far, but the average American table, the food there, has traveled 1,500 miles or more to get to those plates. Things are picked long before they are ripened. Things are grown because they can withstand all this travel. When we eat tomatoes in the middle of January, they usually remind us of what a tomato could taste like. But it tastes nothing like the tomato that you grew in your yard or your neighbor grew in your yard or you picked up at the market in July. Animals are treated as if they are crops, things we grow, not things we take care of. They live in horrifying conditions. And the people who then butcher them and prepare them for the stores also work in horrifying conditions. So I'm telling you all of this because even though we did it so long ago, I still feel like it's something we could all do a little bit better. Thinking about how we spend our money, and one of the things we spend most of our money on is our diet. It's important to think about how we spend our money because it says a lot about who we are and what we value. Every time we spend a dollar with a local farmer, that dollar gets reinvested in our community again and again in a way that's different than when we spend our money at one of the big box stores. Years ago, the Presbyterian Church invited members to boycott Taco Bell because Taco Bell refused to bargain with the tomato workers in Florida. The tomato workers were asking for Taco Bell to just pay one penny more per pound of the tomatoes that they bought. And that this would have really improved the workers, the farm workers' lives, if they just paid that one penny per pound. At first, Taco Bell didn't want to negotiate, was going to just do what they always do. They didn't think that these farm workers in Florida could really have any impact on their business model and why should we pay more when we're getting them so cheaply now. But there was a long fight and the boycott that the Presbyterian and other faith communities, the Presbyterian Church and other faith communities carried out had an impact on Taco Bell. And finally they sat down with the workers and negotiated and the farm workers won. Taco Bell agreed to the higher price for the tomatoes, and the farm workers began to have better working and living conditions. How we spend our money makes a difference. Jesus said to the people who were listening that day, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. There's a lot for us to think about in just these two verses of the several that I read, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Where we spend our money, how we use that income that we have, says a lot about who we are. 
when we spend in one way, we support one way of life. And when we spend in another way, we support something different. Local food is much easier to come by now. We can get things directly from farmers in a way that was a lot more difficult a few years ago. And when we choose to do that, we're investing in something that we value. Where our treasure is, there will be our heart. We say things with the way that we spend our money, and where we do it helps other people see what we value. So one time when we were doing this, John was trying to find these chickens, and it was 70 miles away. So we drove 70 miles, bought a $13 chicken, and then drove 70 miles home. That wasn't a very efficient use of probably our time or our money. But we ate every bit of that $13 chicken, and we loved it. How often do we just eat parts of what we purchase because it doesn't really taste that great and we end up throwing so much of it away? It's not a new idea to think of how we spend as a gauge of our engagement in the world around us as a way to measure what we value. I remember the first time I was talking to one of our elected officials in, um, it was in Erie County, it was a county legislator that was a friend of mine, and she was talking to me one day, and she said, you know, our budget is a moral document. And I had never thought about it that way before, but she was correct, because our budget for the county or for the church or for our homes is an idea of how we spend our money and what we think is important and what we value. And so if we look at the county budget and where things are spent, we see what we think is important. When we look at our home budget and how we spend our money, we see what we think is important. It's not the only way we see what we think is important, but it's one way to measure where our values are. Now, you guys may have been thinking this way about your finances your whole lives, but... As I started to think about it these years ago when we were eating locally, but then all the other ways we think about how we spend our money, it began to make more sense to me. And sometimes I just don't think and I just spend my money wherever is most easy and convenient. Often that's on Amazon. And then I think, oh, I should stop spending my money there. They don't treat people the way I want. I should buy locally. I should buy from a small store, not a big, giant store. Jesus reminds us, do not be afraid. God wants to give you everything. Everything you need, God wants to give you. So when we're thinking about, is it too expensive to eat this way or to buy here? Is it better if I buy it less expensively over here? When we spend within the context of God's generosity, then we can be generous too. We can support local farmers, local store owners, local economy. We can support things that seem more expensive, but in the long run show what we believe is important. We can be generous. We can be extravagant in our giving. When we give to others, when we give to the church, we can be outrageous in what we give. Not because we should or because there's some obligation or because we feel guilty, but because God has given us so much, we can be generous. God wants to give us everything. What if we give everything in response? What if we give everything out to others? That's a challenge. But when we 
think through how we spend, how it affects people, how it affects animals, how it affects the planet. What if we did as Jesus suggests and made our decisions as if all we have belongs to God? If all we have belongs to God, Where are our hearts? Where would our hearts be if all we have comes from God and we are extravagant in all that we do? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. we give because God first gave to us. If you haven't already done so, I invite you to leave your offering in the plate here at the front of the church as you depart. For all that you give and all that we have comes from God and it continues, helps us to continue our ministry and mission here in this time and place. Mm -hmm. 